Mr. Kavilaskis, how you doing today, man? Good, man. Good. How are you? Uh, no complaints at all, man. No complaints at all. Um, so, you know, first off, have to start off with um, how's training camp been going for you, man? It's been good. I've been I've been training for a while, waiting for that fight. So, yeah, so been in training camp of, from probably like beginning of the year. <laughs> gotcha. Now, you know, you're fighting um, Mikhail Fox. Um, you know, like we kind of joked about recently, he's about 11 feet tall. <laughs> and, you know, when I, when I checked, he actually has a 10 inch reach advantage over you. So, you know, what do you kind of do to like kind of negate guys that have such a ridiculous advantage like that? Yeah, it's just I think it's a simple thing. Just need to press, press the guy, make the pressure to the guy and come closer because from the distance, he have a bigger reach. So from the distance is. No, no fighting for me from the distance, like moving on, try to outbox the guy. I just need to go in there and brawl with him and be be close, close up to him. The only thing. Now, um, I'm sure that you've watched him fight plenty of times. Um, What are like a few things about Fox that makes you say, hey, you know, I know he does this really well. I know he does that really well. I have to like really prepare and watch out for these things. Well, like... I think everybody see that his reach and his reach and just like being like smart boxer. He's a pretty smart boxer. He he used his distance. Some tall guys just go in the close distance. Now he's he's boxing smart. He's using his reach. He's he's moving from 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 outside, like from fighting from outside. So I think this is his big advantage. Just he's using jab good. He have long reach. So yeah, he's just he's just holding that distance. What is where he is comfortable in. Gotcha. Now, you know, a lot of people remember the the two great fights that you had with both um, Virgil Ortiz and against Terrence Crawford. <laughs> you know, crazy, crazy fights, man. Um, you know, I don't remember the round exactly, but, you know, a lot of people were saying that you you should have got the you should it should have been it should have counted that you got a knockdown against Terrence. Do you still believe that? Um, looking back at it now, you think you actually knocked him down? I think I dropped him. Yeah, it was it was I think a good shot. He go down like he I, I already mentioned that a lot a lot of time he was saying I was pushing him, but if you watch closely, I watched that 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 episode many many times. I didn't push him down. He just goes down. So yeah, yeah. But the referee didn't count as a knockdown. Huh? It is what it is. The fight ended not in my my way, so it is what it is. You know, it's, you know, similarly, when you fought against Virgil in the early goings, you know, you 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 fought like a really great fight. I, I remember Terrence Crawford going online, actually, and he was just kind of telling people, like, I tried to tell y'all, like, <laughs> he can really fight. So um, between those two guys, who would you say hits the hardest, man? Between those two guys? Yeah. I think Ortiz, is, he's a harder puncher. I think Ortiz. Is it by a considerable margin or just slightly? Uh, no, I think maybe slightly. Like Crawford have a power too, but like don't 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 count that. But I think just Virgil just sits on the punches a little bit more. Mm. Now you know nobody would know better than you. Um, Virgil's been calling for that fight for so long now. Um, you know Terence has his own thing that he's kind of wrapped up in doing, trying to become undisputed and, and things of that nature. But you know, let's just live in a perfect world and say that Crawford and Virgil were to square off, man. Um, you fought both of them. Who would you think, who would you give the edge in that fight, man? Right now, I will say 50-50. I don't want to make no, 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 no stuff like putting on, but I think this is 50-50 fight. I would like to see that fight. I would always say like Virgil T's have a little bit more power, a little bit more pop in his hands. He sits on his punches. He's more aggressive, but Ten Crawford in the later fight, he he showed that why he's a champion. So like, it can go any way. I think so. It 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 will be a very interesting fight. I can tell that. If if you had to give somebody the slight edge, I know you said 50 50, 51 49. <laughs> Who would get that one small percent, man? I would get that one percent to referee. It's 50, <laughs> 50, 50. <laughs> I like it. You should be a politician, man. You don't like to answer questions. I, I, I like it a lot. Man. Hey, man. One day, go to politics. Um, I, I would love to know. I know fans at home would also love to know, what's it kind of like fighting Terrence Crawford in the ring? Is it like a lot of mental pressure he puts on you in terms of his boxing ability? Just just what's it kind of like in there? 
I think just Terence Crawford, like in the beginning of the fight, I was feeling very comfortable. Of the things I was doing, I was feeling very great. But just I think at the second half of the fight, he start picking you up. Like he's he's a smart guy, so he he start seeing the mistakes you make and he he punish you for those mistakes. So it's just, I think it's like it's not like a mental or physical pressure. It's just that he see your mistakes like. The, the way if you make a slightly mistake, he's gonna see that and he's gonna make adjustments to your to your mistakes. So, what I guess what if if fighting Virgil more so I guess because he put so much pressure on is it is it more so like you know he's putting so much pressure it's a lot of mental pressure physically you have to make sure you're physically able to to withstand that kind of pressure from him like what's it kind of like in there with Ortiz yeah. Yeah, Chris, he's he's a he's a powerful man. Like I, I can tell you that he's he's very like he's very powerful, very aggressive, and I think his his thing that he just if he see you hurt, he's gonna go for the kill. He 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 smells the blood, he's gonna go and like he's gonna like unleash like lots of like power and punches to you. And this will happen with with my fight with him. Like he hurt me a little bit, and he never let me go. That's it. Gotcha. Now, you know, you're still rated extremely high in all of the sanctioning bodies. So, you know, a, a title shot for you is not the realm of possibility in the near future. But, you know, we do have Spence that has all three of the belts, well, three of the belts and Crawford yeah. has one of the belts. So it's, it, I guess it makes it difficult for guys like yourself to, you know, kind of get a title shot. But, you know, let's just say that Terrence Crawford and Spence finally do fight, which is supposed to be happening, rumored in November. Who would you give the edge to on that one, man? I think Crawford. Mm. I can tell that in that in that fight, I can tell give give you like that one percent of the slide. With I would if I would go with Crawford. Um, why is that? Could you kind of like break I it? Down? Like Spence, like I like Spence the way he's fighting. He's very like he's a lefty. He's very smart, aggressive, powerful, good IQ in the head. And I think Crawford is. Kind of the same guy, but when you watch Crawford fights at the end of the fight, he's picking up the pace. He's gonna like he he's I think like more like condition wise and like I don't know like he's just picking up like the pace at the end of the fight and like he's just in his fights when you see his fights like the last few rounds he's doing way much better than he was doing the first round. So I think that most of the guys always turn up in like end of the fight and he's just getting better end of the fight. So I think this is his his thing. Stoppage or decision? No, I think decision. Mm. I don't I don't see I don't see stoppage in that fight. Okay. Um realistically, you know, if if they were to fight um and then you know, let's just say there's a rematch, it might happen sometime next year or something like that. The winner goes up to 154, vacates the titles. Um how far away do you think that you actually are from fighting for, you know, a, a, an actual title? Um two fights, three fights, a year, two years, how do you kind of see it? Depends on the fights, but maybe two, three fights and like if if the belts go vacant, if 147 like then I feel everyone is hoping because they like been dragging for a long time. They need to fight. They need to fight each other and then like see what who have the belts. If they want to move up in the weight class, then then they release the belts and then all the other guys can just fight each other and get those belts. Is it so, frustrating? Is it like frustrating for you, man? Like you and the rest of the guys who are really top contenders. Like, yeah, I'm I'm sure you're also a fan of the sport and you want to see them fight, but at the same time, you just like, all right, either sign the fight or drop the belt. Like, I want the belt. Like, is it frustrating for you? Yeah, of course. Like, it's I think for lots of guys, it's a little bit frustrating when they they like just been like calling each other out for a long time and they still like right now. Hopefully, they're gonna fight and nothing. Nothing like no problems gonna get in the way of them fighting. So yeah, I think like a little bit frustrating when they they have they both have like all the belts and they just don't fight each other. So it's not good for boxing. Um, in your view, this fight against them um, against Fox, do you see yourself getting the stoppage? Um, or do you see yourself just going about and just outboxing them? I'm not sure if a lot of people know, but you were a former Olympian, so you have a lot of boxing pedigree. So do you see yourself getting that stoppage or? I'm not, I'm not looking like I never like in the fights look for the knockouts. The way I prepare is always I prepare just if it goes the distance, it goes the distance. But like my plan is just like win the fight and 
I'm just focusing on like beating the guy. And it's it's not like focused on like oh I need to get the stoppage or something like that. I just if it goes to 10 rounds, I need to beat every every round of him. I need to beat him. Gotcha. Um, I mean, you know, like we kind of discussed the um discussed before, his his dimensions overall are just really kind of freaky for the division. Um, in terms of like just preparing for it, do you just bring in a whole bunch of taller guys to spar? Um, do you kind of have to just switch up your your entire training method to fight a guy like that? Well, we was getting like we was trying to get as much as possible like tall lefties guys. We 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 went sparring the Fundora. Sebastian Fundora, he's a six-six guy. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> what the hell, How you grow so big? Yeah, so we 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 have been getting like tall. It's not so much like tall lefties guys. You can have lefties, but like tall lefties is hard to get. But we we're trying to get as much as possible like tall lefties guys. Even like some guys not even lefties, but just a tall guy. We bring him just just to to see that reach to get a bad get used to to the reach of the guy. Did you actually get a chance to spar against on Fondora? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's one division above you. And like you said, he's like six six. I think he's I think he's about Anthony Joshua's height. So it's really <laughs> really uncanny. Um and like how do you see him kind of developing in terms of you know his his prospects at 154 pounds? I know he had the WBC interim title. Do you see him possibly beating a guy like um Jamel Charlo? Yeah, I think so. I think he's he's a he's a future world champion. I think so. He's a, he's a he's a great fighter. I like sparring him, and I like what he's doing in the ring. And he's he's not that average tall lefty, one fifty four guy. He can crack you. He's he's, he's he have some power. So it's, I think he's he's I think ranked like you know, already on top. So he should fight for the title soon. Yeah, he's um. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he's number one in the WBC because he has the interim title. Um, but you know, um, Jermel has all of the belts. He is a pound for pound level guy and a great, great fighter. Um, so what is it about Shabachin that makes you say, um, you know, I know Jermel is really great, but you just have a feeling that Shabachin I actually beat him in a fight. I think the Borg ethic. What I see, like we we just fought one time and we've been like. Just one training with him, and the the way I see, the way he's sparring, the way he's like his board ethic is, the way his head is where it is. When I was talking with him, but just when you're talking with the guy, you can tell like he is very calm and like he's just like he's there. And I think with the skills he have, with the aggression he have, and the, with the reach he have, so like he can box you from the distance like if you if you want to come closer he can get, get come closer to you and box you from the inside so the guy even he's tall he have like outside and inside good boxing skills so i think this is makes fundora something special gotcha um now getting back to yourself um provided you get this win against um Mikhail fox <clears throat> you already said that you're probably two or three wins away from possibly fighting for a world title. Um, is there anybody that's that's kind of on your radar? Um, not saying that you're looking, you're overlooking Mikel at all, but is there anybody else that's on your radar that you're just like, okay, if I was to pick up this win against Mikel Fox, I would like to fight this guy because if I beat him, there's no denying me a title shot after that. I would like, after f this fight, I would like to fight even Danny Garcia or Keith Thurman or your Danny Sugas, some of those guys. Uh, out of those three, I mean, I know Danny did just move up to 154, so I kind of doubt that he would be willing to come back down to 47. Or but, I can 54, man. You know, I'm not surprised, man. You're, you're kind of jacked. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not surprised, man. But um, if, if, in, uh, if you were to get a fight, well, if you were to have your choice between um, Ugas and Keith Thurman, both guys were former world champions, um, who do you think would actually give you um, the more difficult fight in the ring? I think they both look alike, like with the, with their boxing abilities. I think they're like both look alike. Maybe Turman have a little bit more experience, so maybe I would say maybe Turman. But no, no disrespect with uh, Ugas. He's a, he's a former champion. He beat Bakia, and he's a, he's a great fighter too. So yeah, it's hard. One is better with them.
<laughs> gotcha. And just um, last thing for me, man, in terms of uh, just your your activity, do you want 2023 for like, do you want to fight three, four times during the year? Or are you just OK with just having a more slow down pace? Uh, being slow, like like slow pace with the fights, like it's first you want to fight as much as possible, man. Mm. I just I just want those fights. So I tell her like I've I've been like training probably like, from January, like nonstop training camp, like and always always on weight, always ready and just waiting for the fights. We can tell you've been training since January, man. Like I said, you're jacked. We can tell. <laughs> we can tell, man. But um, but I definitely appreciate your time and jumping on this interview. If you could just um tell everybody at home where to follow you on like your social media accounts and things of that nature, that'll be great. Yeah, my social media Instagram is Mean Machine One Forty Seven. So people go follow me, and you're gonna see like my training stuff, what I do every day, how I prepare, how I become so jacked up. <laughs> I'm gonna go check it out myself, actually. But but yeah, so you will be fighting Mikhail Fox October eighth. I'm really looking forward to it, and really appreciate your time, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Bye.